Hi. So uh, I recently spoke about uh, the Center for Inquiry and its uh, podcast um, Point of Inquiry. Um, just recently had Amanda Marcott on as a guest, and uh, so now I realize that uh, this this is not a skeptical skeptics show at all. It's becoming a uh, political uh, feminist. Um, vehicle, I guess. Um, it seems like, well, so my talk now is about this women in secularism squared conference in D.C. I believe it's in May. And uh, you could look into it at uh, the Center for Inquiry dot net. And um, let me see. So it's titled Women in Secularism squared or two. Um, so that's a title. Um, are they just going to name the women that are in secularism and is that going to be, is that the end? I mean, how long will that take? Oh, oh I see they're going to talk about women in secularism. Hmm, why? I mean, maybe we should have a men in secularism and, uh, but what's the subject though? Well, you're women. Um, then what? We're going to discuss your womanly um, uh, characteristics or female characteristics, or are you going to talk about? I I don't know. I uh, I encourage all uh, everyone to check this out and see exactly what this is going to be about. But uh, let me see. Yeah, it's going to be very short if that's if that's the subject. Women in secularism. Amanda Marcotte. Um, and a few of a few others. Um, I have a nice long list. Um, Skeptic is going to be there, so you know how that's going to go. Um, but I, I'm going to. I want to. I want to read the. Um, I have the uh, code of conduct here. Okay. But um, is this a female version of the Amazing Meeting? Because I did a little research on the Amazing Meeting, and uh, I, f I figured, if, if, like I thought, it's uh, that's sponsored by the the Randy Foundation. JREF rather, James Randi Educational Foundation, and uh, um, I, I, I believe they uh, these a, a certain amount of feminists. I think it was Skeptic had a problem at, about a uh, problem at the Amazing Meeting, and uh, I think this is going to be the female version of the Amazing Meeting. Um, but I would suggest this uh, this uh, this version, this women in women in secularism too. First of all, men. It, it, it's not about you, so I would suggest men don't go. I mean, just just the outset. It's not about you, and uh, I think you're probably going to get get that feeling when you go there. It's not about you, so why go? I would say don't go, because you'll get accused of lurking, staring. Um, see, the problem with that is, see, women don't realize this, but uh, men are still supposed to be the initiators of romance. Um, we don't, we, we're sick of that role, but we don't see you women stepping up to the plate. You're still playing the, <clears throat> you know, the chaste, uh, not with a T, chaste, E-D, and um, so it's still up to us to do the chasing, and um, if it's not the right guy, of course, of course, he's creepy then. You know, if he's not good looking enough or if you don't like him, you know, when the, initi the initiation happens, you know, would you like to go for coffee? Um, he's creepy, but if, if you like him, then, then you have a date. Um, but that is still the role for men. Um, I don't, I don't condone it. I, I like a woman who's uh, on equal terms with me, and I am not going to play that chasing game. Uh, and I would think most men, a lot of men, of course, Enlightened men like you guys, especially in MGTOW, uh, men going their own way. You're not gonna, you're not gonna do that. No chasing involved. But anyway, here's the policy on hostile conduct from the Center Center for Inquiry .net. Now this is uh, at this conference in May. Um, I believe it might be in May in D.C. It's called uh, Women in Secularism Two or Squared. I don't, I'm not sure which it is, but. Uh, um, Right here it says, CFI and its affiliates are committed to providing a safe and hospitable environment at our conferences. 
So, see if I and its affiliates prohibit intimidating, threatening, or harassing conduct during our conferences. All right, that sounds fair. Sounds fair. Okay, here's prohibited conduct. Prohibited conduct. In general, prohibited conduct include, includes any abusive conduct that has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with another person's ability to enjoy and participate in the conference, including social events related to the conference. Here we go. Prohibited conduct includes, but is not limited to, yelling at or threatening speakers or attendees or any significantly disruptive conduct. By way of example, repeated interruption of a speaker by an attendee is prohibited. Prohibited conduct includes, but is not limited to, harassment based on race, gender, sexual orientation, disability, or any other protected, protected group status as provided by local, state, or federal law. Boy, I gotta adhere to the law. By way of example, abusive conduct directed at someone because of their race is prohibited. Prohibited conduct includes, but is not limited to, sexual harassment. By way of example, unwelcome sexual attention, stalking, and physical conduct, contact, such as pinching, grabbing, or groping out, prohibited. That sentence included unwelcome sexual attention. Don't know what that means. Sexual attention. Don't know what the hell that means. Men. <laughs> if you look at someone, if you look at someone's breasts, that might be unwelcome sexual attention. You might be in trouble. You get kicked out. You pay your, pay your money and get kicked out. Nice, right? Um, so anyway, critical examination of, of beliefs, including critical commentary on another person's views, does not by itself constitute hostile conduct or harassment. One of the underlying rationales of this policy is to promote the free exchange of ideas, not to inhibit it. Well, that's good. Glad to know that. But, um, well... Go to that website and uh, see what see what this see what their um, see what their plans are at this uh, conference and um, make some comments. All right, take care.